Now this is probably the best item we've purchased in months. This should be an easy 1500 bucks without any problem. It'll be a quick seller as well. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at a few items I purchased while the wife and I were out looking for something. A table is, is what we were looking for. We stopped by like a Trading Post vintage store. They have a lot of vintage and, and collectibles and stuff there too. They're dealers, they're sellers as well. And then we hit up a couple thrift stores. Again, I wasn't out sourcing, so to speak. I'm not really in the market to source, but we did run into a few awesome items dirt cheap that I just couldn't pass up. So here's a couple items I purchased and I honestly paid $2 a box for these. Now, they're not super, super pricey. They're not going to be worth a small fortune, but I should make 25 bucks or better on each one of these. Now, I looked to make sure at least the figures were here and all the main parts. This is complete. If this was NOS, it would probably get me about 60 bucks top end uh, in NOS condition. And then this one here, they go along together. So these were probably owned by the same person. This set was as well $2, and this is pretty much all there. I haven't put it all together. Somebody here probably will. But again, another 25 bucks or so on this one. So 45 or 50 bucks out of a $4 investment. I don't care if they're used or not. Playmobil sells immensely well, even if they don't go for a ton of money. We've sold some for some buku bucks. Um, one of the better sets that we've had was, I think it was the Cavalry, 7th Cavalry or something like that was the last one. I've had the castles, I've had big play sets, buildings, cars, vehicles. Ghostbusters set is a phenomenal set. Goes for some really good money if you can find it. Highly collectible. A lot of the newer ones are just widely collected because they come with a ton of cool stuff. Star Trek and things like that. They're just off the shelf, good toys. They've been around since the 70s. They sell extremely well. I do nab them up if they're dirt cheap. I've shown them in recent videos as well. We have some Playmobil Knights and some other sets sitting around here as well. Going to list them all together. It's an easier way to sell them, hopefully, to the same person and get them out the door all at once. Now, these were pretty cool as well. It's getting close to Halloween. Great time to start to get Halloween stuff up right now. Now, these were marked 50 cents. They were on sale, and I only paid a quarter a piece for them. I should easily be able to get 10 bucks or so out of them if I photo them right, do some nice uh, keywords in the title. They should get me at least the $9.99 mark, I would say. I've sold many of these. These come in many different sizes. There's actually a monster one that's like 12 or 14 inches tall. I've had that one as well as the middle size ranges as well. Most of these squishy ones do extremely well for us. They're not super old or anything else like that. They're just unique. They're jack-o'-lanterns. A good title, as I said, can get you some decent money on these. Now, here's a couple of other items we picked up as well. And these were just a couple of bucks. Um, most of the places we went, they have stamp cards. And we always save them, even if it takes us a year or two to fill one up. Once you fill up the card in some of the stores we go to, you get $10 off. And you can use several cards at the same time. So um, these still work. Hopefully you can hear that. The 1976 Mattel. I've shown you other versions of this. There's a Batman. I have a Pink Panther one here right now, too. They both work um, in the same condition, basically. Hey, uh, take me with you. Hey, take me with you, and what's up, Doc? Um, these should easily get me $14 profit or so. Profit after fees and everything else is said and done. Excellent items. Love this sort of stuff. These sorts of things will sell very, very quickly, even if there's other ones on. Enough of these sell on eBay to easily get your money back in just a very short period of time on things like that. Some of these might be dated 73, and I do believe there's another version of these that look a little different that came out in the late 60s as well. Uh, somebody else told me, a friend of mine told me they made these from Marvel Comics. So there's a Hulk, a Spider-Man, and a Captain America. Now, I've never seen those, so I don't know if that's true or not, but I wouldn't put it past them. Mattel made a lot of toys like this, and they had a lot of contracts and deals. Here's another item that we nabbed up here. Now, this is large, and it's probably going to be oversized, and there's not much I can do about it, but it's worth still selling, even at this size. And this is heavy. Um, this game here, you can look it up. It's, uh, let's see here, across the board, and it's horse racing, and that's all you should type in, and you should be able to find this. Now, this thing weighs a decent amount. I believe it's actually hand-cut-out walnut. Let me open up the box. 
Uh, and this is literally all you'll see. That's actually hand cut out, hand put together uh, a board here. And all the accessories have been attached by hand. This one can sell for 80 bucks or more. Now, in season, this can go for even more. 90, 95, 110, 115. Even with the added shipping costs, this will still go for that kind of money. I don't know what this thing costs new. I've never bothered to look it up. There's a couple different games. I've had one other one of these before, and we got 75 bucks for it. This was $5. Well worth the investment, even if I only get 45 or so for it. Uh, which I'm sure I'll just hold out and wait till Christmas time. I'll list it right away just to get it up. If it sells, it sells for top dollar. Either way, it should be out the door this year for a decent penny. I don't mind hanging on to something. If you don't mind waiting or you can afford to wait, long tail is always far superior. It's like passive income. You list it and you forget about it. It sells one day and off it goes. Now, I didn't pay much for it. It was purchased with a bunch of other stuff, which is also going to make us some money and will be a quick flip as well. So we'll get our money back. If this one sits for a little while to get top dollar, I'm fine with that. It's not going to hurt us. It's just going to sit on a shelf all wrapped up and ready to go. So this is honestly probably one of the best items we've purchased in several, several months. This should get us a few thousand dollars. Now, what is this? This is James W. Marshall's autograph. And this was probably signed at, say, the 1876 World's Fair or some other fair festival in California. In 1848, Mr. Marshall here actually was the person who found gold, the first person to find gold in California. His finding of gold actually started the gold rush. Now, he passed away in 1884, 1885. So it's obviously before that time. If you look online too, you do a few searches. Heritage sold one about the same condition as this one here for almost $3,000. Average price is $1,500 to $2,000 on average. Some can go for more. Now, there isn't any up on eBay. This gentleman's name doesn't appear anywhere on eBay. Again, James W. Marshall, 1848 is the date he found the gold. That, again, is one of those scarcity items that you never expect to find. It kind of got me a little shaking there because I was excited. I knew what I had. I know it's tied to the gold rush, obviously, because it states that. Now, if you followed my channel at all, I've talked about gold rush items as well as California items, left and right. Those are some of the highest dollar selling stuff, especially early. We've sold some early 1850s gold rush stuff before for... She's phenomenal money. Now, I know scarcity-wise, the prices on these sorts of things are going up right now, so it may even be worth more than those prices. One hasn't sold in a few years, especially on eBay. Now, if you want to see one that's sold, you can go to Heritage and log in and then check it out. Um, you've got to have an account with them, just FYI, to see some of the sale prices of sold items, but it's free to create if you don't know that. Heritage is a great source for some pretty good information uh, you can check out, again, all of their prices on stuff. But Now, the wife and I were out. We're still searching for a table to fit in a spot in a corner that's the right size. We wanted something vintage or shabby chic, I guess you would say, and didn't find it. But we stopped. I found that. Only paid a couple bucks for it. Now, the person selling it to me for just a couple bucks is a dealer. They had a ton of stuff in their store. It was a decent-sized store. But paper that's in this condition, they don't carry a value to them. So I just paid what they asked for it and left and was on my merry way. That's the only thing I found in their store that was worth me buying. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Neo Geo Pocket Colors.
with 16-bit power, linkable to the Sega Dreamcast. Revolving joystick. 146 color display. Six cool styles. The graphics will blow you away. Neo Geo Pocket, way ahead of the game. Games rated everyone to teens.